long march through the institution. You ever heard that before? The long march through the institutions. What is that? Well, you should know a socialist said that in the year 1967. That's what they believe the origins of that are. But what was this socialist talking about? Well, here's the problem the communists faced here in America. The Soviet Union, remember, they wanted communism for the whole world. It was never supposed to be for Russia. It was supposed to be for everybody. Communism has to be for everyone for it to work. That's why we have globalists now. These are just communists by a different name. But anyway, it was supposed to be for everyone. Communism is an aggressive, destructive religion of death. That's really what it is. And it's death for everyone and everything. They, they have to kill everything in order to remake this world, which never ends up getting remade. And America was always going to be a problem. So the Soviet Union decided, well, hey, we're communists. Let's just tell America about communism. And they came over here and they tried to tell America about communism. And they tried to sell it to the workers and this and that. But the problem was communism is never popular. But if it's ever going to gain a slight amount of popularity, it's always with a miserable society. You know, that's where you get somebody. They're down and out, miserable. They're always going to get somebody. But if you have a society that's wealthy and prosperous the way America is, communism's never going to catch on. And the Soviets were so frustrated, they could not get it to catch on here. Why won't these Americans listen? Don't they understand how much better it will be if they just let us kill a couple million people? Like that kind of thing. There, there really was a plan at one point in time, wrap your mind around this, to take Americans who wouldn't accept it and put them out in a camp and they thought they might have to kill 10 to 50 million of them. Hey, we're, we're, the, the, this is stuff they wrote down. Hey, these, these guys won't accept it. But they realized they couldn't do that. So what do you do then? Well, the communists, to his credit, understood very well that I don't want to use, I don't want to say a nation, because it applies actually to tiny tribes. From tiny tribes to big nations, what your society relies on are its institutions. Societies are simply guided by their institutions. You are guided. Now, I'm not talking about you specifically, but as a, as a whole, America is guided by the media. The media is a huge institution. Education system, that's a huge institution. The government is a huge institution. Religion, entertainment, different institutions are what hold up a society and guide the society. So the communists realized, hey, this thing isn't going to catch on. They're not accepting communism. They don't want it. So why don't we just take over the institutions and make them take it? Because once they take over the institutions which lead a society, they don't have to convince you. They don't have to convince me of anything. No, say this or you go to jail. Say this or you don't have a job. Believe this or you can't do this. You see what I mean? That's why they talked about the long march through America's institutions. And now, now that they have achieved leadership in all of our institutions, now that they own them, well, this is where their real work begins. And what is their real work for them? Remember this, always remember this about the communists, no matter how many times we talk about the communists and communism and American communism, remember, the solution to every problem, no matter what it is, is to kill people. That's, that's what communism is. If you're Stalin and took over the Soviet Union, life is good. You're the leader of this huge country. You rule it all. But there are some people who aren't happy with your rule. They wish it was someone else. They think you're too this. They think you're too that. Well, if you're Stalin and you have people like that, just go kill them all. Remember, communists are anti-humans. Solzhenitsyn called them the enemies of humanity for a reason. So they don't look at a human being as being a unique, God-breathed soul. If a human being is a problem for you, we just kill him and get him out of the way. So Stalin just killed a bunch of people. That takes a different form today. The climate change nutters. You know about these people. Well, if you actually listen to what they say, what do they say is the solution to all of these problems that they've made up? All the emissions, all the food problems, all the this. What's the solution? We need a lot less people. They're on record, on videotape, saying we should have a reduction in 90% of the Earth's population. That's like five, six billion people, by the way. The communist sees a problem, 
And he looks around and sees who he has to kill to solve that problem. Well, now that they control our institutions, they're busy focusing on who they need to get rid of to get rid of all these pesky freedom lovers who are holding them back. Well, the media, they found the enemy. The biggest threat to Americans is not jihadists overseas. It's homegrown domestic terrorists inspired by white supremacists. The gravest terrorist threat to the homeland is domestic violent extremism. Domestic terrorism is our number one threat. What can we do to stop it? What we need is to take the laws we already have and apply them to white people. If we can go after international terrorists, why can't we do it at home? Today we're mostly looking at our neighbors rather than a Osama bin Laden that's far off in Afghanistan. Bin Laden and co. didn't have supporters and sympathizers among the House Republican caucus. The Republican Party is basically a domestic terrorist cell at this point, and they should be treated as such. There are elements of the GOP that are starting to look like the jihadists. MAGA and the domestic terror threat is much more worrisome than any foreign threat. Al-Qaeda wasn't white, and white terrorists have a certain advantage, a certain, what's the word I'm looking for? Privilege. It is domestic white terror that is the greatest threat to our way of life. Right-wing domestic violent extremism is the single greatest threat facing this country. There is a serious right-wing domestic terrorism problem in this country. President Trump is gone, right? And the extremists are not. The Republican Party is the getaway driver for these domestic terrorists. What I would call MAGA terrorists. You're either with them or with us. Now... Now they focus on their enemies. And look, it's, it, it goes way beyond that. The media, that's one sick institution. That's one of their main roles now. They're, one of their main roles is making sure all of America knows you're a domestic terrorist. But don't discount entertainment. I bring up entertainment a lot because for so long the right has dismissed it. No one cares what this actor says. No one cares what the pop star says. What are you talking about? Yes, they do. Millions of people care. Uh, whether they should or shouldn't isn't up to you or I. They do. Your kids, what your kids watch, what your kids hear, it will affect their kids' values. Your kids still watching Disney? But well, congratulations, the communist, he's at Disney, and he's at Disney for a purpose. Our leadership over there has been so welcoming to, like, my, like, not-at-all-secret gay agenda. All that, like, momentum that I felt, like, that sense of I don't have to be afraid to like let's have these two characters kiss let's in the background this like I was just wherever I could just basically adding queerness to like the, if you see anything queer in the show I'm proud of but like I, I just was like no one would stop me and no one was trying to stop Support the First TV today and get instant access to exclusive specials like Who is Ron DeSantis, The History of FBI Scandals, and America's Worst Presidents. Visit thefirsttv.com support or download the First TV app to become a supporter and start watching today.